water, textiles, water, lakes, water, and the town which is growing rapidly as many other cities, Coimbatore is growing at about 3.8%. 3.8%. What it means is in every, every day, nearly every day, they're building one block of, um, shall we say, New York City. That's a quarter mile uh, as a block goes. That's the rapidity with which all our cities are growing. Coimbatore is no exception. Um, how did Sirutuli go about this challenge? Where, what was the genesis of the movement? Where did it begin? What were the challenges? What were the failures they had to overcome? What are lessons? This, uh, this experiment with lakes and water and watersheds uh, offered uh, to the team at Sirutuli. Um, what are lessons that we can take other city leaders from other places, from Pune, from Surat, from Andabad, uh, Bombay, of course, what are those lessons that we can take from what they have done there? That is the essence of her lecture today. She's reluctant to make it a lecture. She hopes to make this extremely interactive. So I urge all participants to share thoughts and questions. She will also get a sense of the quality of minds that are represented here today when you speak. She hopes to make it in two parts. The first 20 minutes of lakes. Yes. Uh, uh, someone, someone there has got to mute, or you have to be alert. Host please, has to be alert and mute. Sorry about that. Uh, so she will take the first twenty minutes or so to to sort of uh, tell us about the story of Sirutuli, and then after that she wants to invite. I won't say questions, but some insights, perspectives, anything that you all want to tell her or share with her in a way that her team, a lot of them from the senior team of Sirutuli are present here today. She invited them also to be uh, present in order to see that, uh, you know, we also learn to learn and hear from them. Every city has stretched its limits, as we know, on sources of water from rivers or, or from lakes uh, uh, that were built, you know, in the last, say, 300 to 400 years. For instance, I come from a city like Bangalore, where the first set of city uh, of, of lakes were built in the 16th century during the time of the Kempig August. We had 580 lakes in 1920. Today, we have no more than 83 surviving lakes. ISRO, a large campus of about 40 acres, was built, uh, you know, it's about four minutes from, four or five minutes from where I stay. It was built on a lake that was closed, that was killed, and, uh, and, uh, and, and the campus was, was created there. There was a time of innocence, of ecological innocence, shall we say, when you know town planners decided that if there is a land available and there is a lake there, that lake has got to be, of course, filled and killed and uh, you know and, and given for development. You know how many residential areas in Surat, for instance. Surat is a is a is a, is a city of about ninety lakes today. Surat used to be a city of about four hundred lakes. If I go to Chandigarh, for instance, it has one man-made lake. You know, and Jeet Kumar writes to me about this. I have requested the team out there, which is the host team of the PJMT, to see if they can put up a little while from now a link to an article that he wrote on Chandigarh lakes, water capacity, and so on. My, I will only I take another, say, four or five minutes to tell you how Sirutuli's experiment or Sirutuli's journey is important for us. Look at Aurangabad, look at Guna in Madhya Pradesh. I mentioned Surat, Patiala and Punjab. They're all reeling under shortages. I, I was in Adilabad some time ago and I have worked in Adilabad for about 25, 30 years now. And I find that in the same challenge, you know, there are lakes and systems that have been created by kings and others in the, in the past, but there has been completely lack of maintenance in those areas. Governments are not able to look beyond mere long distance solutions and sources for water supply. While the key lies in engaging all stakeholders, as Sirutuli has done, in other inventive solutions, as uh, uh, with, which brings stakeholders into some active engagement. As I said, Jeet Kumar's article is one that will be interesting for you to read. When I talked to him about it, when mm -hmm. I yes, Rajesh, I, we have started actually. Uh, Rajesh, I, are you listening to what I'm saying, Rajesh? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. We have started. We are going with it. But we, you know, it took the first seven, eight minutes for me to acknowledge the, the presence of uh, some of the distinguished people. And I'm talking to you about the context of what we are doing today, Rajesh. Yeah. I, 
Now, Rajesh writes to me, it is important for many of you as participants to listen. You know, um, he says, he says, Chandigarh was lucky to have one lake, though an artificial lake, which has changed the context, ambience, environment, ecology, and culture of the city. And I know what you can say about that. If you are people who are sitting in Coimbatore and who are soldiers of uh, Sirithuli, I know that a lot of these things resonate with you on environment, on ecology, and culture. Um, what can a water supply board do? Yes. Little we can do if we can't get uh, uh, the, the people to act on one side as bulk water users and as citizens on another side, uh, you know, who can, who can uh, come in with some proactive participation. Um, I'll, uh, before I invite uh, Rajesh, a word of thank you to Vanitati for his time. There can't be anyone more appropriate to be a catalyst in this monthly series that the PJMT has been doing. And what is important about not just uh, the, this Sirithali uh, lecture from, uh, from Vanita Mohan, but the, the previous two uh, that we had in, in January and February, and the one that's coming up in April, uh, which uh, uh, Sandeep Sikre is hosting, mm -hmm. are all pushing, seeking to explore the deeper ends mm -hmm. of ecological sustainability beyond the narrow confines of buildings alone mm -hmm. or the built environment in a city. Some housekeeping announcements, please, if there is anyone who wants to write anything, I mean, who wants to share anything, please put this up on the Q&A box and not on the chat box. You will see on the chat box introductions and profiles of people and of institutions. Uh, so we'll request you to see that the questions or insights, thoughts, anything that you want to put in, are put in there at the, at the, uh, the Q&A. Uh, last, in times such as this, I, I reflect on the simple wisdom of a Dr. Prem Jain, and I'm not saying this because this is the Prem Jain Memorial Trust Lecture or any such thing. In his cheerful ways, he typically would say, if we can change the way you think about buildings or your city, maybe what you build as an individual will change the way the world lives or the world is in a sense i believe that is what Sirutli and the team that vanita mohan has led has done in these years uh, rajesh it's time i handed over the mic to you you've been impatient so you take over and see what you want to say namaste mm -hmm. ravish khosla nice to see you there um, nice mm -hmm. to have some very distinguished discerning leaders who are present today over to you rajesh thank you very for the introduction. Audio is low, your audio is poor. Thank you, Hari, for the introduction and for the conference for this evening. Ajesh, your audio is poor. My audio is poor, is it? Maybe you should use a, a earphone or whatever. No? No, it's very tinny, the voice. I'll go through my phone. Worry, we have time. Not to worry. I know you were getting to be concerned about uh, time. Can you hear me now? Okay, go on, go on, please. Let's not go on that. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sure we'll manage to hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Please go on. Please speak. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it was about a month back when. No, I think you've got two uh, systems there. You have to close one. There is an Pardon? echo coming because you've got two of them open. Okay, at least we can't hear you at all. I think we should. It was a month back when Mr. Hari told me to organize a speaker for this, and in a matter of the only person I could think of is immediately is Mrs. Vanita Mohan, and I thank her for accepting to be the distinguished speaker for today's lecture. This is Vanita Mohan officiates as the chairperson of. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I can hear you. Go ahead. Please go ahead. Talk. Please talk. Yeah. Rajesh, go on. 
as the chairperson of Recall Limited, manufacturers of automobile products. Recall is one of the few organizations the region has more than 25% women among them. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Here heads the CSR activities of Recall. Recall Road Development Program under her leadership has initiated several community development activities such as water harvesting, afforestation, tribal wealth, and healthcare for the community in and around Pernayak Palayam, where the main plant is situated. The invaluable experience gained in the areas of water management and afforestation in the rural areas has enabled her to play a key role in putting together the concept of Sirthuli. Sirthuli means tiny drops of water. She is the managing tr trustee of Sirthuli, an NGO which works towards clean and green environment with special focus on restoration and protection of water bodies of Coimbatore. Increasing the green cover of the region by involving the community in afforestation activities has yielded significant benefits to the landscape of Congo region. In fact, she has made a people's movement and Today, people from all walks of society immediately heed to Mrs. Vanita Mohan's call and participate in all the activities, including cleaning of the lakes and a lot of other activities. Her passion for children and their holistic development has resulted in the initiation of programs to create large-scale awareness among student community on the need to protect and save Mother Earth for posterity. She is also the Vice President of RAC Resident Awareness Association of Coimbatore, which is aim, which whose aim is to create a beautiful way through effective garbage management initiatives. Mrs. Vanita Mohan is, all, is also the past president of the 91-year-old Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry Coimbatore. She has to a credit of holding the post as the first lady president to occupy the highest post of this prestigious organization to lead the representation, representatives from trade and industry. I was fortunate to be a vice president. Under her leadership, she initiated the formation of Congo Global Forum, comprising of business leaders from seven districts of the Congo region. Congo Global Forum has been successful in addressing the air and rail connectivity needs of the region through relentless lobbying with the central government. She is the recipient of many awards in the sphere of women achievers and eco-conservation. Most noteworthy among, among them is Abdul Kalam Seva Ratna Award for a contribution in the sphere of water conservation from the Dalai Lama. This is Manita Mohanji. You can start your presentation now. We help on sharing screen. Mm. Uh. Can I start? Before you start, you can share. Can, I, can, I, can I request the screen to ensure that all the mics are muted? Can someone confirm that? Can I request Yatin Malik to say yes to what I am asking now? Before she starts. Uh, Bayal, uh, can you uh, can you so I try to mute all, but they keep unmuting themselves. You have to uh, be alert on that because we don't want that uh, kind of disturbance again uh, when she begins her lecture. Uh, yes, right. doctor, we'll take care of it. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Over to you, Vanita Ji. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Namaste. I'd like to thank IGBC and Prem Jain Memorial Trust for giving me and my team at Sirutuli an opportunity to share our experiences of a green journey, which has spanned over 18 years. Uh, before I start, I'd like to make a small correction to the topic of today's uh, webinar, an affair with the lakes of Coimbatore. An affair can have several connotations, but to us, to the team at Sirutuli, it, it is a lifetime's bond. That's how we look at the activities of Sirithuli. And I'd like to share our experiences of a lifetime's bond. Okay. 
Welcome to Coimbatore. Coimbatore is well endowed with a lot of natural wealth. The Western Ghats standing like a fortress, like in the form of a horseshoe with the Noyal River flowing from the Western Ghats and enriching the region. So Coimbatore has, is always famous for its sweet Sirwani water, the second sweetest in the world, as they say, the river Noyal, lush green corridors, salubrious climate, which was uh, occupying a large part of our region until the 1970s. In 1980, UNDP warned us saying, Coimbatore is fast depleting its groundwater and it's time to watch. But the words went unheeded. In 2003, Coimbatore district was declared as a drought prone district. Water bodies dried up. The river Noyil, which was always perennial, we couldn't find a drop of water in the river. As a result of which agriculture failed, a water surplus city became water starved. This is when a few eco-conscious citizens of Coimbatore came together and asked themselves a question. Where did all the water go? If Noyil was a perennial river, where did all the water go? So they said, let's together make a difference because at this point in time, we need water. At 1,200 feet, there was no water in the board wells which were spewing air. There was absolutely no water in the reservoir. 15 days more is what we have. That's what the commissioner said at that point in time. And we were desperate. Something had to be done. Thus was born Sirithuli in the year 2003 with just a pocket full of dreams and a deep yearning to get back water to this region. We started out with the water, water management to start with to conserve water bodies, but one thing led to another and we realized all these pillars of focus that we call it uh, the Green Guard, Waste Wise, Spread the Word, Grow the Farmer, all of them were connected. So we have five pillars of focus. What I would share with you are the two critical pillars, which is Water Watch and Green Guard. Coming to water, our first endeavor was to, uh, was to convert the brown patches of parched rivers and water bodies into blue. Well endowed is what I still repeat with the Western Guards yielding, uh, having more than 2000 millimeters of annual rainfall. The Noyal River Basin, the Noyal River originates in the Western Guards. The river basin uh, spans 3,550 square, square kilometers. And our ancestors had the forethought to create 21 anikets and 31 system tanks when they already had a lot of water. This vision uh, goes to show that there was so much of water in excess that they created all these extra infrastructure facilities. Water management is all about creating new water bodies, rainwater harvesting structures, desilting of tanks, and basically watershed development programs. We follow the water conservation mantra of Dr. Rajendra Singh, who's our guide and mentor. He said, where it runs, make it walk. Where it walks, make it stand. And where it stands, make it sit in the lap of mother nature. When it rains in the hills, water runs down. It's literally uh, running down at breakneck speed. Check dams make them, makes the water run. Water bodies make the, uh, make the water, makes the water stand and sit in the lap of earth. Sorry, water bodies, when you go back to the other slide. Check dams make the water walk. When it runs from the hills, check dams make it uh, walk. Water bodies make the water sit and sit in the lap of Mother Earth. When we start a project of desilting, we have a procedure that we follow. First of all, identifying the water beds, water bodies, 
establishing a relationship with the stakeholders and conducting a digital survey, contour mapping, visual documentation, drone shoot, all of these are the proprietary work that is done. And we also create uh, trial pits to understand the average depth of dissertation that has to take, take place because we cannot remove any kind of gravel from the water bodies. Most important is to find a sponsor to get the project going. After having um, obtained necessary permissions from the authorities, and then the actual desilting work starts, clearing bushes, shrubs, garbage. Most of the water bodies we find garbage uh, dumped into them, sewage uh, running into them. The inlets are cleared because these are like the arteries for any uh, water body, the surplus channels and the inlets are uh, standardized. Desiltation takes place when uh, we remove the silt and create the uh, buns all around the water body so that the water doesn't flow out. Any damages to surplus weirs, surplus weirs are carried out. And finally, the post desiltation survey, contour mapping, visual documentation, drone, everything is done before a completion certificate is handed over to the beneficiaries as well as the sponsors. Where we are standing right now is the first tank, Krishnambadi. In 2003, when we didn't have a clue about how to go about doing things, the only mantra we, want, we had in our mind was, we want water. So that drove us. We did not have time to sit and organize workshops or get into meetings. We plunged into action straight away. What you see is a water body with a little bit of sewage water stagnating in it. We didn't know what to do. We, uh, we asked the local stakeholders and they said, go away, don't waste your time. You seem to have a lot of time on your hands. You seem to have a lot of resources. I think that can be well spent elsewhere. But having put our best foot forward, we didn't want to go back. We had a consultation with specialists, with the local stakeholders who were willing to listen to us and we started our journey. We also consulted Dr. Rajinder Singh because halfway through the project, what you see, what you see behind you are the bunds that were created after having removed the silt from the same piece of land where you saw a lot of greenery and garbage dump. Dr. Rajinder Singh said, if there is no water here, there's no water anywhere in the world. That gave us a lot of courage. He said, the Western Guards are like a fortress behind you. And the water that fo the falls there has to necessarily come into your city, into your region. So go ahead, don't bother about what people have to say. We went ahead with the desilting. There was so much of silt that we had, uh, we had to create islands because the silt could not be removed. It was not available for uh, the farmers, which is a sad thing to, do, uh, uh, to say, but we had to use the silt to create buns, which is good in a way. And then the islands were created on which now we have a prolific growth of trees. With just two days of rain, having the channels, uh, the channel, the feeder channels also cleaned with just two days of rain, the entire place was filled with water. There was so much of water, people had not seen so much of water in the city, anywhere in the region. It was a delight, to, it was a sight to behold. It was just unbelievable. There was so much of celebration and this, after this, there was no looking back. This is yet another uh, water body very close to the Western Ghats. In fact, one of the first water bodies of the, the Noel River Basin. What you see in the picture on top is a flat piece of land adjoining farming lands. When the water would come, it would flood all the adjoining uh, areas and it would go away. There was no storage capacity because it was heavily silted. We followed the procedure, desilted the entire place, created a bund. As you see, the bund is, uh, has been created. And now you see agriculture is safe. The farmers are happy. Uh, the water stored in this particular tank has recharged their bow wells and their open wells. So they have a lot, to, uh, a lot to be happy about. And those islands you see in the center are uh, places where we have planted trees. The trees have started growing. So uh, there's, not, there's so much of benefit that has come out of this particular tank.
The second one is uh, yet another water body very close to the city. This is a very interesting piece of uh, work that we did. What you see on top is flat land resembling a cricket field, a football field, whatever. When it rains in the morning, the water comes tumbling down. The entire place is filled with water. It looks like a sea. Evening when the rain stop in the hills, the entire place is dry, bone dry, because the water has all flown away, uh, flooding the adjoining areas and just disappearing. We went down eight to nine feet, removed the silt, created a bund along the side. And today there is water throughout the year. All the water that can be saved, uh, the fertile agricultural lands in the adjoining area, they benefit a lot. And uh, this is truly, this is a twin tank. The second part of the, this is the twin part of the, uh, the same tank. Uh, they're connected between each other. And this is a site that you say you can see even now. This is almost in the, within the corporation limits. You see the residential location, the residential uh, houses. Um, they would dump their garbage into this particular body, water body. They did not even know that it was a water body because the channels, the surplus, cha the water channels were all blocked. There was no water coming into this particular tank because it was all silted up. People used it as a public toilet and also for dumping their uh, garbage and building debris would also get dumped there. We had a sitting with the stakeholders. We explained to them what the need to uh, redo this tank, rejuvenate this particular tank. And all of them were very supportive. And the, and the picture to the right is uh, the tank uh, during the process, during the work. And what you see below is the tank filled with water. There's so much of water in the bore wells, in all the, res in the adjoining residential locality, bringing a lot of cheer to the people around. <coughs> this is another flagship project of ours. What you see in the background is the Western Guards. When the, when the rains come, the entire water floods this particular area. This was originally a water channel, a stream, uh, which was connected to the River Noyal. Um, you see barren land all around. The PWD had constructed seven shake dams. So you, it goes to show how much of water there would have been for it to, for seven shake dams to have been constructed. Picture number one, you see the check dams, hardly any check dams because they've all been washed away. What we did, and you can also see the barren lands. Uh, one particular farmer who holds two acres of land had 17 bore wells in his land, and yet there was no water, not a single drop of water. They were all ready to leave the place and look out for other occupations. But then after we took up this particular project, seven ponds, cascading ponds were created one after the other. We rejuvenated, we repaired the uh, check dams, reconstructed them, and then the water came. When the water came, you can see the stark difference between the first one and the third one. Agriculture has come back, people are happy, there is water in their wells, and life is back to normal. We would have lost 250 farmers, but for this particular cascading check dam. Uh, pond. We are also into building check dams. Uh, this particular check dam, Nandangarai, is again one of our flagship projects, which was just a marshy piece, piece of land. And today there is water 365 days a year in the year, uh, irrigating about 650 hectares of agricultural land because this is primarily an agricultural belt very close to the Western Guards. And this water. Um, takes care of the need of 650 hectares of agricultural land. Creation of new, uh, new ponds. What you see uh, to my left is the Chinmaya International Residential School, uh, which primarily used to use water from their bow wells. The bow wells ran dry because there was no, uh, absolutely no water, 2003. Um, 
they used to buy water in tankers several tankers to take care of the children's needs when after we created these these this particular percolation pond now all their uh, bowels have got recharged and they don't buy water anymore uh, this is an, yet another anna university regional campus what is most important today what hari ji was talking about also the urban rainwater harvesting structures there's so much of water falling on the ground uh, in in a in, within a, an urban landscape uh, the dire need of the hour is to harvest every drop that can be harvested which is falling on the ground with 100 mm of rainfall on 1 hectare 1 million liters of water can be harvested now in these are the rainwater harvesting structures makes water sit in the lap of mother earth just like your uh, your water bodies what you see here is a rainwater harvesting pit in simply office with 650 mm of average rainfall in kaimbatore uh 162500 million liters of rainwater is available for harvesting the water supplied by the corporation from the two reservoirs pillur and sirwani is close to 55000 million liters this is not including the water that is extracted from the ground through bore wells not withstanding that the excess water which is still available is approximately 1,7500 million liters which can otherwise be saved for uh, uh, you know the aquifers can be saved this can become an additional supplement our aim therefore is to save every drop of rain that falls on the ground within the city's landscape i'm sure all of you are aware of the need to uh, harvest rooftop rainwater rainwater and even use it to the point of you can use it for drinking closer to home this is the home of sirathuli the noyel life center uh, to demonstrate to the public that it can it is possible i'm sure most of you are in the building industry and i don't need to tell you this but yet for people who are not acquainted with this um we harvest the rainwater from our roof which is about 1500 square square feet of uh, rooftop space is available and the amount of water that we can save is about 91000 liters per year the water from the roof goes through a filter chamber which is very effective construct uh, com comprising of sand charcoal and blue metal and goes into a storage pump pump storage sum uh the overflow goes into a bore well again so there's not a single drop of water which is wasted the water which is stored in the sum gets um, uh, taken into an overhead tank which is then filtered and we use uh, we use rainwater to drink which is most unpolluted and clean and fresh um more than ra 750 rainwater harvesting structures have been constructed across the city of coimbatore in open spaces factories educational institutions residential associations and so on the circular ones are in open spaces the rectangular ones are along roads and then the dual purpose which where you can extract water as well as harvest water there has been a significant change in the static groundwater levels after all these initiatives what you see here is one of the uh, streets of kaimbatore uh, a heavy downpour soon after a heavy downpour uh, within 4 hours the entire water got taken in into a rainwater harvesting structure but for the rainwater harvesting structure this water would have been standing for about probably a couple of days um, and just got evaporated but this within 4 to 5 hours the entire water got taken into a rainwater harvesting structure what you see is people wading through the water is so much of water this would be breeding mosquitoes and causing a whole lot of health issues now all this water gets taken
gets taken into a rainwater harvesting. This happened within four hours of the downpour. What you see there is a rainwater harvesting structure which has filter material. The water passes through the filter material and goes into a shaft, into the bore well and into the aquifers. This is like your ATM. The milestones that we have crossed, over 7 million cubic meter of storage, additional storage capacity has been added. 30 plus water channels, streams and channels have been cleaned and connected to the Noel River system. 30 plus tanks, both uh, village ponds as well as large tanks have been desilted. And more than 750 rainwater harvesting structures have been constructed in and around the region. The impact of the entire thing has been in the press. The groundwater level goes up across Coimbatore district where there was no water at 1,200 feet. Today we have feet, but today we have uh, water at 35 feet, very close to the water bodies. And uh, the, the deepest, the, the highest is about 300 to 400 uh, um, feet. That's how much the water has risen in the aquifers. We still have a very, very long way to go because there is so much of water, the aquifers have to be filled up and this is what we are endeavoring to do. The blue returns. Blue has returned after a lot of uh, efforts. We still have a very, very long way to go. What we have started doing is introducing uh, technology, using technology to um, dot our initiatives. What you see is the Noel uh, uh, application, Noel research application, the Noel basin, where which shows all the streams uh, which are connected to the Noel River. This is based on a lot of platforms, the Bhuvan, Google Maps, and several other platforms, we, which has given us information. The information has all been collated and put into an application. With this application, we were able to look at the, the blue stream, the blue are the first order streams, the blue ones, the orange ones are the second order. The pink one is, uh, uh, are the rivulets, the rivulets which feed the main river. The rivulets are like your arteries and blood vessels, which eventually feeds the, feed the uh, river, which is very, very critical. What is critical is to ensure that we rejuvenate and reactivate the streams, uh, which are most important. And I think that it's, it's a huge task, but I'm sure with the help of the support of the government, the government has, Tamil Nadu government has announced the restoration of the river Noyal, Noyal River. And this would help, technology would help largely in ensuring that the river is restored. What you see here is a map of the uh, water bodies of Coimbatore. This is also another application which has been put together by a team of uh, um, technically qualified people. Um, the green ones are the water bodies that have been um, done by us, desilted by us. The yellow ones are the ones in pro process, progress. And the red ones are the ones which are yet to be uh, desilted and activated. What you see to my right are the rainwater harvesting structures which have been identified and mapped uh, within the city. These are all rainwater harvesting structures in both open spaces and along roads. The latest is a fracture zonation, as we call it. In the olden days, uh, with absolutely no equipment, no technology, no sensors, no GPS, our ancestors came up with the bright idea of identifying. It was, I think it was very uncanny the way they went about it. Connecting water bodies with aquifers, the aquifers were identified and connected water bodies created in order to make sure that the aquifers kept feeding, the water bodies kept feeding the aquifers. So the aquifers were constantly running. They had no problems. There was no drying up of aquifers. So this is the technology that we have used for a project that we have taken up, a major project in one of the Southern districts of Tamil Nadu, which we hope will, uh, will, uh, will give us a lot of insights into what needs to be done in our future products. Technology and Sirithuli is, I think, uh, together can make a lot of uh, new milestones, can create a lot of new milestones. This is a story that I would like to share with you. I shared with you, Krishnabadi, how it all started. This is to show you how 
we connected with people. What you see here is a, a, a lake right in the middle of the city, Periculum, which had patches of sewage uh, water drained into it. Pigs uh, feeding in it, feeding pigs were being bred there and cattle. Garbage being dumped in heaps and heaps and then invasive species of uh, thorny bushes, shrub jungles occupying a large part of the water body, leading to a lot of nefarious activities. When we started taking, when we took up the project uh, and we started cleaning it up, nobody would believe that, including the government, uh, the, I still remember the collector telling us, I can't believe that there is so much of land right in the middle of the city, 350 acres is no small uh, extent of land. And uh, when we started, we had people, we had, this was the beginning of a people's movement in Coimbatore, the saint and the soldier, the little ones and the senior citizens, women, young women and men, people from all cross sections of the society uh, beyond the boundaries of caste and creed joined us every Sunday to get connected to a water body, to bring back water. There were no, it was not selfie shots. We didn't have people coming there to uh, have fun or to take selfies. They were there to work. Their only chant was water. We want water for climate. And what you see is more than uh, the, the boon that we got from Mother Nature for having worked for her, for having uh, propitiated her. It is a sea of water that you see uh, to my right. A place that was dry, filled, had sewage, pockets of sewage and uh, debris dumped. Now today has uh, water throughout the year, 365 days a year, primarily because the channel which brought water, fresh water into this particular water body was cleaned. And it is the blood, sweat and tears of Coimbatorians which made this happen. The migratory birds have returned. Migratory birds which had disappeared from the landscape have returned. Aquatic life has improved. There is so much of biodiversity uh, beside mankind. It, it, together, it, uh, it all happened because it was powered by people. When I say it was powered by people, it is both the government and the citizens. It's a beautiful example of how uh, public-private partnership can make things happen, can move mountains. Uh, we have a very good working relationship with the government. We are totally apolitical. We go with the government and the governmental agencies, uh, but for their support, we would not have been able to make it. This is about water. I'll be more than happy to take any questions on uh, aspects relating to water before we move on to afforestation. Uh, Vanita, we one or two questions from very eminent people. I won't mention them. One is a, guy, a person called uh, uh, Padu who had been working on energy for a long time. His question is very simple. Uh, what are the core benefits of the water management exercise? For example, uh, farmer incomes, how much did it impact after you did what you did on the water? It's a very basic question, as you know. Is there any um, measure and mechanism that you have set up at Sirutuli in order to see that people understand what those benefits are? The second one is, what is the impact on farmers uh, and the water, uh, what is it called, the crop patterns and, you know, how have you changed them from, let's say, water inefficient crops like paddy and sugarcane to things where, uh, you know, you have brought in uh, millets and such uh, water efficient crops. I, I had similar challenges where, for instance, you know, uh, at the Rishi Valley School of about 120 acres, that watershed was very rich, but farmers outside who gained from it with, uh, you know, bore wells which became richer or uh, whatever, they decided to abuse the, uh, the legacy that was provided to them. What do you do to protect these ecosystems, therefore? No, we have uh, we have a lot of uh, initiatives that we have created to understand the depth. That's why I said it has risen from 1,200 feet to 300 yeah. feet and 400 yeah. feet. That's right. But having said that, 
this is something the farmers have had a, a, a lot of, they've gone through a lot of ordeal. And I think it is, that's why we have included the Grow the Pharma in, as a, a special vertical. And there's a lot that needs to be done in terms of uh, uh, giving them advice on cropping patterns and the need to get back to crops, uh, which, which, will be, uh, which will consume less water. Uh, today, if there is a lot of water, people tend to use water, uh, use all the water. Today, there are techniques where you have innovation, where you have, uh, 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 where you can use minimal amount of water. So that's a huge exercise. And I'll be more than happy to share all our statistics with you, Hariji, because it's, it's what I have covered. I have tried to condense it into a very small uh, capsule. There is a lot of statistics that we have with us, which we can uh, share with you. Wonderful. I, and uh, th this is for all the other participants, including Padu. If there is some way we can help them, you know, in terms of uh, further documenting what she has done and that uh, which can inspire other cities and uh, other water managers, that would help, I suppose. Anyone else who wants to speak up? I think critically she is saying economic transformation needs both government and the people to work together. Anyone yes. who wants to respond to what she has said so far. You can unmute and speak, please, anyone. Hari, if I may. Yes, sir. Yeah. I, can you hear me, Hari? Yes. Yes, please. Loud and clear. Yeah, I just wanted to make the point that this was an excellent presentation. The pictures which showed um, you know, water bodies which were dry to being filled with water and so on. And there was some very interesting information she provided. But I think underlying everything that she said, I think is the fact that social and economic transformation is possible through water conservation. It's just not saving water, but it's far more than saving water. It'll have its impact on reverse migration. It will have its impact on farmer incomes, you know, cropping patterns, and so on. And I'm sure they have all the data to support that. But I think that message needs to come across uh, when we move forward. But this was an excellent presentation, and I would like to commend the speaker on that. Sure. Uh, Banitaji, would you want to respond? Padu is a former uh, director of USAID, uh, South Asia. Lovely man, great perspective. Would you want to respond to what he has said? I'm sorry, I didn't get the last part of your. Uh, I wasn't very audible. Uh, Padu, can you speak up? The yeah. last part, yeah. Well, the last part, in fact, the, only, the major part is that there's major economic and social transformation possible through water conservation. It's just not saving water and raising the levels of groundwater, which is important in and by itself. But there are major co benefits, and uh, we heard some of it, but we really need to kind of sit with you and find out what are the other major co-benefits beyond the saving the water and the rising groundwater. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's fair. No, no on, it's, it's life centers around water. And I think if water is provided, especially in an area where we have been water starved, it was almost to the point where people thought of migrating from Coimbatore. So with so many industries in and around Coimbatore, uh, if you think of, if you feel that there's, there's not going to be any water, the water sources are all dried up, I think uh, we would have lost it all, right? And right. without agree. water, I, 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 would, uh, I really wouldn't know how, to, uh, how there would be a, a socio-economic transformation without the basic fundamental availability of water. Of course. Absolutely. I, I recall uh, visiting Coimbatore uh, 20, 15 to 20 years back, looking at the water problem uh, on around that time when uh, the World Bank mentioned that the water problem in Coimbatore is going to be very severe. And we saw a phenomenon known as competitive drilling going on, which each farmer trying to drill even deeper than his neighbor in order to uh, access the aquifer. I'm sure now the question of competitive drilling will no longer take place and will be more cooperative drilling. If I might say so. Sure. So no, it's, uh, yeah, we, we have more than five lakh bore wells. Uh, this was uh, statistics that we got four years ago. We have more than five lakh bore wells sure. in this region. 
So you can imagine the amount, it starts, it is not just water conservation. I agree with you, it is not just about water conservation. That's why we have as one of our verticals, creation of awareness. Creation of awareness among the people on optimum water usage to ensure that we do not waste water is something which is going to be very, very critical. And that cannot be done. It has to be done by everyone together. I get that. Um, Suresh Pai, would you want to ask her anything? Because, you know, you are working on rainwater harvest. You're looking at 120 apartments. You're looking at about 250, 300 crore liters of saving this year. What is it that you would want to ask her? You mentioned last week about lakes and uh, restoration in Bangalore, for example. Yeah. Suresh Pai, please speak. Yes. Yes, the, all this, I think, uh, tremendous efforts uh, uh, put in by Mrs. Vanita Mohan, I think, uh, adds up to the efforts. What I'm asking is, uh, uh, how was the support from the government and uh, how the people uh, cooperated in ensuring that this is successful? From where the money came? See, because this is an enormous uh, project. From where did the money come? And uh, how the project conceived? Because... Uh, from uh, no water to surplus water, it is remarkable. Can you please tell us uh, how this was done? See, initially, the seed uh, capital came from uh, a handful of people who started this uh, organization. Uh, more because it was a risk. We couldn't ask anybody for money. It was, uh, we had to do it for ourselves. We did it for ourselves. That's how we, the whole thing started. But when people started seeing the benefits, when I know, but my borewell has started yielding water. For instance, the, the first tank that we took up, when, we, when the water was, uh, with, with the tank was filled with water, uh, soon after the adjoining residential localities, they're all prime uh, 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 localities, but dried wells, uh, bore wells that had dried up completely started yielding water, completely dried up started yielding water. That's when people started believing that it's working. So over a period of time, when we, when we took up a lot of projects, more than 30 tanks, and then you start seeing results, people automatically contribute. So we have yeah. get a lot of donations from people. And they also know that whatever we have been doing, it's going for a good cause. And now with CSR funds, people have come forward to take up uh, individual ponds, rainwater harvesting structures sure, sure. and several more. Actually, you know, it's no surprise to all of you. It's, it, it's, it's a no-brainer if you ask me. This linkages, if we only know how to restore it, Earth is extremely responsive to these things. Whether you are doing it at some 20 acres or at some 50,000 square feet, or you are doing larger spells of, let's say, 100 to 200 square kilometers, a watershed very, very quickly responds. If you know how to also restore the skin of the earth, which is what uh, Varita is going to speak about in the next, uh, say, 10, 12 minutes of uh, her uh, uh, part two of this session, shall we say. But before she begins, if there is anyone else who wants to ask or share some thought and insight, Suresh Ji, do you want to speak? You said you met uh, Vanita Ji some 10 years ago, and uh, you know, you have been tracking possibly what Coimbatore has been uh, uh, journeying through on this uh, water model. Would you want to ask her or say, say something, uh, please? No, uh, what I want to do is compliment once again on behalf of the whole, not only people, the IGBC family, for the great initiative that she has taken, visionary work, sure. she and the team, the way in which, what I like about all this particular work that she has done is yeah, yeah. all from the point of view of the, of the uh, uh, demand side uh, area and uh, uh, the what a lot of things will come from the supply side by builders, developers, what can be done within the buildings, into yeah. the water management. But here yeah. is at the source level, she has been able to initiate and get that water available. Yeah. And that is a very major thing. If you get Absolutely. the water, what can happen? So she has not only the whole country and the world, oh, what sure. fantastic initiatives can be taken by not only for integrated water management through also water body restoration and dams and uh, more oh, important. Yeah, that's right. Yet, you also that's... told on that. On which each one of them can build up on in the building side. For, uh, for us, it's very important. Since I we got it. Where uh, so yeah. at the time I was in Hutco, the support for the uh, uh, water supply schemes for uh, uh, these areas, both for the uh, outside area of Coimbatore and Coimbatore, 
And these type of initiatives came into when I was aware of the great work she has been doing at that particular point of time itself. But I'm happy right. to be able to see I and to talk to each other. And I think it's a it's a very major initiative. Everybody should uh, uh, do that. What I feel now is that now that Coimbatore is a smart city and there are a lot of funding available for yeah. those people in the integrated water management, I'm sure Vinidaji, along with the uh, uh, well, CEO of the smart city, Coimbatore smart city, yeah. And the district collector would be able to get some more additional sure. funding because now not only this is also the year where uh, the whole uh, I got it. In fact, uh, I so Rajesh was telling me that yeah. the you know the smart city program in Coimbatore is revolving yeah. around these lakes now yes, as an ecosystem. You know, so, uh, I, he, sure. he mentioned it briefly. That. Yes, yeah, we got a solution for that. Sure, but that's sure, sure. Only that with a new ministry for water resources called Jal Shakti is already available. I know there, that's right. I was discussing with the. Sure. Uh, uh, Director General of the Ganga Rejuvenation Program and also for the Jal Shakti one. And they've mm -hmm. been looking at uh, the work that has been done of the conversion uh, from brown to blue, which you which heard now. Now, no, can, you, can you respond, therefore, if you say that there is something like that from the central government? Suresh Pai asked you a question, or he was asking the forum a question. Yeah. How can the government help if citizens want to take an initiative? You know what Manita Ji said. She's saying we started with our own funds initially. Yes, yes, we yes. got to a point when we demonstrated and then she did the numbers yeah. of lakes or, or seriously did uh -huh. to a point where they're now expanding to southern districts. Other government uh, you know, departments are asking seriously to do. So how do you respond to Suresh Pai's question? Uh, if I can answer in one word, I think she did use the word public-private partner, part, partnership. I just added one word. Actually, it's public-private people's partnership. It's of course, of course. Yeah, yes. We know. We have, you so know. What she has done is the contribution. You saw the number of people, elderly people, young people, community people, sure. all joining together as a movement. It's a I get that. I get that. Uh, happen on water resources and, and serving the like the Chipko movement or the ladies taking the understood. Trees, uh, she is taking the Jaldara here. Sure, sure. Uh, no, the yeah. secret the secret is to make it a people's movement. Yeah. Today we have several NGOs. It is yeah. not just uh, uh, Sureshi. I'd like to correct you. It is not she. It is team Sirutuli. Absolutely. Team Absolutely. together. It is total teamwork. And there is no individual identity which has yeah. been responsible for yeah. this. Yeah. Having Sorry. said that, I would also like to share with you that there are several NGOs, uh, so, so many NGOs, which have come forward to take up little water bodies. Uh, they, they do ex so much of work goes on every Sunday. They call it Kalapani. Uh -huh. Kalapani, people are uh, working on uh, clearing up uh, water channels, clearing up uh, debris. And there is so much of work that is going on, so much of awareness. It is not just about finding funds. I think if you have the will and if you have the ownership, sure. if you have a sense of responsibility towards yeah. the environment around you, yeah. government or no government, I think it is all of us who are responsible for water. And a government has only this much of resources that is available within that means. And they have to be stretched across so many uh, activities. Now, if I'm going to be, if I need water, I need to create my own water, right? If there, if the water falls within my uh, uh, compound wall, it is my water. Like recently, somebody was asking me, why do you insist that everyone uh, has their own rainwater harvesting structure inside their home? Yeah. And then I asked uh, the person, he said, okay, the rain that falls within my uh, compound is my water, right? You agree or not? said yes. No, but still you can let it go. It will go into some uh, drain and then eventually find its place to wherever it has been going all these years. I said, okay, if God decides one fine day, he decides instead of water, I'm going to shower gold. Are you going to let it run away? You said, know, no, uh, yeah. I'll reach out to my neighbor and grab that gold also. That's how it's going to be. You know water the old is going story. To be, water is going to be blue gold, much, much more precious than yeah. the yellow gold that all of us are climbing up. You know, yeah. when you when you talk about uh, whose property is it, you know the old uh, theory, or at least 30-year-old uh, the theory of the tragedy of commons. If you go to any francophone part of the world, anywhere from Algeria, Morocco, Laos, Cambodia, of course, France, you will find that any water that is below 30 meters is not something that belongs to you. 
So you can't put a bore well if you are in Rabat in Morocco, for instance, or in Mohammedia, or in Casablanca. If you want to make any well which is over 30 meters, you got to go to the capital and get a direct permission from no less than the, the capital itself. So the point is that the, this tragedy of commons has never been addressed in India. Anyone can go and plunge any bore well. The other effort, I think in a way, in a sense, Padhu was also talking about, which you are also saying, we all agree upon it, is that by providing water, we also have to ensure that there is this spirit, as you have done in Siruthuli, I suppose, to have the bulk water consumers, particularly farmers, to understand that this water is not, this effort of Siruthuli is not going to be permanent if they don't know how to continue to nourish and nurture those practices that you have installed as watershed practices go. Uh, I have found, for instance, in North Karnataka, practices that were set up, say, 15, 18 years ago, in 2002, in Raichur district, in Jalhali, Taluka, and places like that, I find that they did not maintain it, and therefore, it got dismantled in some ways. So the point is that consumers or beneficiaries of such uh, water systems that you have now done also have to continue this. I'm not saying this for Vanitaji. I'm saying this for all of you leaders out there who want to see how you can support such projects in other cities. In our region, I, I think I should uh, compliment the builders of this region. Right. They have participated in a very, very big way in supporting our activities, right. both through, front, through fronts as well as uh, in all our uh, uh, field activities. There's a big role that the Builders Association of this region, uh, they have contributed. Sure. Sure, well, Mr. Shugan, yeah. Mr. Shugan Jain, you're listening uh, intently, I can see. Would you want to add any comment here to what Varitaji has been saying, sharing with us? Shugan Jain. Yeah. Uh, is this project being associated, is associated with IGBC of Coim2 also? From the consumption point of view or from the building development point of view, you know, so that the water being collected is utilized properly sure. and the situation when the water becomes scarce again is minimized. I agree with you. Those are things that uh, we have to do at the IGBC. Uh, I, I take your point. I leave it there now. Um, the, brief, the brief answer is this is an important component of integrated water management yeah. on which in a 100 point rating scale for all other concerns together, roughly about 20 points come only on integrated water management, including water bodies and other related issues, including RWH, etc. I'll stop there. More details later. Yeah, over to you, Varitaji. Uh, you have another 10, 12 do, minutes. Do we have the time? Uh, we will make it happen. We will make it happen. It's 6.45. Doesn't matter. We'll take another 10, 12 minutes. Since okay. you have planned it, I know you have thought about it. I'd like you to share. Go. Now, moving on to our afforestation projects, which is basically connected with water. Without trees, there's no water. Uh, our afforestation program um, is the Forest First Forum. It's called, uh, it's heralded by the Forest First Forum. This was a scenario which happened over just two years. 2008, avenues lined with trees, less cars, less vehicles. Then 2010, you have so many vehicles bunched up with the tree cover reducing. And today, if you look at 2021, it's miserable because we've lost most of the trees. Thanks to, uh, yes, we need flyovers, we, we need road expansion, but not at the cost of our lung spaces. Dr. Abdul Kalam has been our guide and mentor in our afforestation program. He launched the Pasumai Payanam in 2005, uh, kickstarting our uh, afforestation efforts. Uh, the plant tree that he planted stands tall in the midst of the VOC park that we have in the center, center of the city, where we kickstart all our uh, outreach programs for children. Lots of children, lots and lots of them, student community, youngsters, volunteers from spanning the entire cross-section of the society participate in our afforestation activities. There you see the children. Sorry, I'm rushing through. This, here again, we, feel, we follow a procedure. We do the survey, um, the boundary marking, assessment of power, water resource, 
and uh, so on, cleaning of the plantation area. Uh, primarily, a lot of garbage. Most of the sites are filled with garbage. Cleaning them, pitting them, digging the pits, and uh, making space, creating space for laying the uh, drip lines. We, though it is expensive, we ensure that the lines, the, it is irrigated properly through drip, uh, through drip irrigation. The plantation process it, itself, by by itself, is a it's a very, very uh, sketchy process where we prepare a template. We have a template which is followed regularly using native trees. We use only native trees and we have our own tree park, which, uh, which churns out uh, thousands and thousands of uh, tree saplings. Uh, once we plant, we maintain it for two years or until the trees start taking care of themselves. What you see is Coimbatore, central part of Coimbatore, where, where originally we had uh, lush green corridors. Today, we hardly see any trees. Um, houses and houses and houses contributing to a lot of pollution, exactly. and uh, which, has, which has really created a lot of uh, damage to the uh, environmental situation in Coimbatore. The last five years has seen us approaching the tree plantation activity itself in a different way. Uh, the Miyawaki pattern of uh, afforestation. Akira Miyawaki was a Japanese specialist who found this new idea, who innovated this new method of tree planting very close uh, in, to create intense uh, forests within cities using native trees. What you see here is an educational institution outside uh, Coimbatore. 18 months later, this is literally a forest that we have, that they have in their midst. The green returns, this is another educational institution, the Anna University in Coimbatore. Uh, the authorities approached us um, to, uh, to ask if we could plant 100 trees. When we visited the site, 130 acres, we said, can we plant 500 trees to start with? They said, do you think there's space for 500 trees? We said, yes, 500 trees can be planted. What started out with 500 trees, today we have 85,000 trees, all of them, having created a complete change in the biodiversity. Biodiversity has returned. The bees, bats, butterflies, and birds have made it their home. It's a habitat for, for the entire bio, biodiversity uh, community. This is yet another prestigious project of ours, the CRPF camp, Central Reserve Police Force. What you see in the background is the uh, Kurdimale, as they call it, uh, which houses the training center of CRPF. The second picture is three months later with the saplings grown. Thanks to the sewage water which is uh, produced, which is generated in the camp, we use the sewage water. Sewage water doesn't get uh, uh, let into a water body, so it's used to grow plants. And uh, this was exactly uh, one, one, uh, 15 months later. Right, entire place. Another minute or so, if you don't mind. Minute or two. Pardon? Another minute or two. Would you would you be able to close? Or would you need more time? I'll close. I'll close. Sure. Yeah. So this is our. We have several tree planting programs. We have uh, special tributes. Again, uh, uh, giving trees to S. P. Balasubramaniam in his uh, memory. So tree certificates, people in Coimbatore have started issuing tree certificates instead of gifts and mementos. And this is one such tree certificate that we give. One tree at a time, I'm sure there will be millions and millions of trees soon in the landscape of Coimbatore. Uh, what started out as a small, very small step, today we have planted close to about seven lakh trees and we hope to plant 2.5 million, uh, 25 lakh trees for every citizen of this region. Together, many hearts, many hands, beyond caste, creed, and religion have come together to make it a people's movement, and that is the success of Sirtuli. Together, I'm sure we can make the world a much better place to live in. Thank you. Organized. Well, uh, Colonel Sridharan, can I request you to speak a few words? I mean, you're, you're as dedicated and you know her well. Uh, Colonel Sridharan? Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Hariharan. And uh, Mr. Suresh, I saw him today after so many days. I settled down in Kuwait 26 years ago on my stint in the army for 30 years. And what Mrs. Vanita Mohan has been has told us is every bit, I think she has told us much less than what she has done. She has not told us about the waste management. She is the one who told me in 19, sorry, in 2004 to think about a sewage treatment plant and send me to Karunia University. And every project of ours, we have the sewage treatment plant and we recycle the water only for the garden. She told us why the garbage has to be sent out. And we said, okay, let us try to create, you know, um, buildings or wherever we are, that nothing goes out. She has done so much to the city of Coimbatore. And more than anything else, I want to say, yes, it is a people's movement, but it required a leadership. There were many people who were at the back, but somebody had to lead it. I think she led it from no water. And no water, I can tell you, frankly speaking, one of my projects in Ganapati, the, board, the open well water was 146 feet in 2008. In 2009, I must tell you that open well was full. So that is the kind of a transformation that we have seen in Coimbato. It's now I say it is Namo Coimbato because I have spent my lifetime here. And what a small movement that she started. Seriously, I have seen children giving one rupee, two rupees, five rupees, and everyone chipping in and giving it. And more than, as she, as she correctly said, it is not a PPP, but it was a movement of the public. And today we are so happy to see the ponds are full. In spite of the climate change, we see the water is available. And the best part of this whole program, ladies and gentlemen, is the water saved is not drunk. The water saved and the recharge water is used. What an amazing concept it is, so that we don't have to keep digging borewells. And we don't have to do all these things. And today, Kaimitur is talking about giving 24 by 7 water. I think it will be achieved. Because if today the subsoil water level has gone up so much, then what it was in uh, 2003, I think a lot should go to Sirituli and all other people who joined it and all other NGOs who have worked so hard for this city. Thank you, ma'am. You led Thank the you. way. You're still leading us. And you'll always lead. Sirituli and every single Tuli of Coimbatore. Thank you very much. Uh, every single Tuli of Coimbatore or of India, I will say. Raghupati, since you've been listening in very quietly right through, can I request you to respond to what she showed in the last seven, eight minutes before I invite uh, Sandeep Sikre to speak on what you have been saying for the last, say, five, six years, how every city has to have 30% vegetation, how we should have urban green ecology, Raghupati, SRP, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Yeah. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hari. I think it was, uh, I have met her several times and we have interacted with Mr. Anita Mohanji several occasions. But the, the first time I'm going through a very detailed presentation to her, we offer, and this has been an amazing presentation. Every minute, it was a great learning and a great source of inspiration. And um, I thought that water program, water presentation was superb. And then when I really saw that green presentation, it was simply amazing. I mean, words may not sufficient as may not be sufficient. And I'm short of superlatives to say what the amazing content it had been. I mean, Madam Vanita Ji, you have been a, been a phenomenal contribution. And the way in which you have transformed the Kwaimutu city from the both from water point of view and green point of view. Okay, it is amazing. We have a lot of things to learn from you. Thank you very much. It's a great honor to listen to you. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Thank you, Is there a way between CIA and ITBC, we can bring in some intervention to add to what Sirituli is doing in Coimbatore on urban green ecology? What is it that we can do from CIA or ITBC? And I think the first major point is, I think this is an extraordinary case study where how people together have made a difference, how they brought government together, how they all the common man participated, how an impossible thing was made possible. And yeah. this is a, a powerful case. I think this must be showcased more and more. Yeah. And the people like within IGBC should lead in their own cities. 
and things can happen. Absolutely. I, not just IGBC, everybody else. In yeah. fact, in Bangalore, there is a very inspiring movement that is just now going on. People like Usha Kini are there. They are looking at a thousand crore liters or 10 billion liters. And they're not looking at lakes, which is also part of the, uh, the mission agenda, shall we say. I'll stop there on that one. Architect Sandeep Shikre, chairperson, IGBC Mumbai chapter, and host of the April session of this distinguished lecture series of the Prem Jain Memorial Trust. Over to you, Sandeep. Good evening, doctor. Uh, I'm overwhelmed. I must say that this was one of the most brilliant presentation I have seen. It actually reminds me when Dr. Jain used to tell us that in our country, our battle is not with the energy conservation, our real battle is with the water and the indoor environmental quality. And I think this particular session was absolutely brilliant. And I would echo the feelings that Mr. Raghupati has said, we must archive this presentation. And I would humbly request you, Dr. Hari, to give this presentation to share it with so many student chapters that we have. Because this is not only a theoretical uh, session, but this is a very practical session where there are case studies which have shown that it's not something that we talk uh, in terms of theory, but it is actually doable. And, and I think uh, lots of compliments to uh, Vanita ji and the Sirithuli team. We are, we are extremely happy that you are here with us today and we could see all the things that we used to be, we were reading about it, but I'm very glad that I could attend this particular session. And I would really urge you that you will have to honor us with few more requests when we would actually like to go to the students, you know, that's very important. Sure. So, uh, so, and of course, uh, Dr. Hari, lots of compliments to you because you have been uh, leading from front and getting so many inspiring and meaningful sessions uh, for the fraternity. So it's brilliant. Uh, as regards to the next program, uh, I feel uh, we are honored at West. Uh, thanks to Ashish Rakheja, Payal and you. And of course, the leadership at the board of a Dr. Jain Memorial Trust. So on 30th of April, uh, we will be having a session. Uh, it will be in the afternoon from 3 to 4.30. Uh, if I may just take two minutes and share the screen, would that be okay, doctor? Sure, please, please. So that the other listeners also will know. And uh, to the rest of you, while he shares the screen, I must tell you that you will all get the invite. We are now archiving all these uh, whatever uh, new entrants today. You might want to listen to another inspiring session that will come up on April 30. Go on, over to you. Yeah, yeah. So it's a it's a it's a session which is on 30th April, which we would call as a memorial lecture because this is an initiative from West, and I must give a lot of uh, compliments to Gurmitji because he's mentoring this whole initiative, and we have formed a community which is from the West. There are so many people who have so much respect for Dr. Jain, but to have a humble beginning, there is a community of five people, which includes myself, Gurmit Ji, Mala Sinha Ji, and Mala Singh Ji, and also Sandeep Talaulekar and Sandeep Mandarita. So this program will be uh, on 30th April. We have Mr. Ashok Monani. Uh, he is a very reputed uh, personality in West. He's a national chair of Naretco. He also has his own uh, very able and very thoughtful uh, developers organization and they are also committed to develop every square foot that they develop is green. Ashok Monani is also a leader at the national level and also at the state level. Uh, he himself is a very versatile personified person and he'll be giving a inaugural speech on that particular day. Then we have Samip. Samip is a young architect from Mumbai. Uh, Samip is graduated from Mumbai University and then did his master's in Harvard University. He is recipient of a lot of national and international awards. He is also having a lot of initiatives like Bandra Collective, which is doing a similar kind of an initiative in Mumbai city for greening the Mumbai city in various parts and nooks of the city. Uh, he will be talking on a very relevant topic to our uh, basic agenda. And Samip will be giving a keynote speech on that particular day. And we feel extremely honored that uh, Guru Gauranga Das has accepted our invite and he will be there as a motivational speaker. Uh, as many of you must be knowing him, he is a great personality. He has given a brilliant talk at TEDx. He has also given a lot of corporate talks at Google and Salesforce and so on. So he will be also giving a presentation on one of the case study of a ESCON temple that will be quite uh, interesting to uh, view from his own uh, presentation desk. And also he would be uh, 
uh, honoring us with his motivational and uh, spiritual speech. Uh, all of you must be knowing that besides uh, being a Prabhu uh, at ISKCON Temple, he is a BTEC from IIT Bombay and he is a great cook. For many of you, you may not be knowing, over this uh, last year in a pandemic, at the Govardhan Eco Village, he cooked more than 111,000 meal by his own hand to feed the migrant laborers. What more can you want? So these are the three brilliant uh, 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 dignitaries that have agreed to join our uh, session on 30th April. I would uh, uh, request all the viewers who are here should join this program. Thank you. Thank you, Sandeep. Rajesh, I can't thank you enough for not just saying yes, but for having instantly thought of her, thought of Vanita Mohan. You know, I have, I have known of her work. I mean, as another person who has been uh, engaged in the environment sector, I've known of Sirutuli's work for quite some years. But then for you to have said, Rajesh, that uh, you will speak to her and you said that her office is in the neighborhood, you both uh, share an office on the same road. That was wonderful from you, Rajesh. Thank you so much for having uh, brought someone here who has shifted the conversation. You know, we keep talking green building, we talk built environment. We need to go beyond methodology. We need to go, like she said, like Raghupati said, into this business of, like he's talking, Sandeep is talking of the Bandra Collective. We need to go into how we get citizen engagement. Ushakini, Suresh Pai, uh, Lakshmi Rao, all of you leaders who are listening into this, I'm sure you have lessons that we, I mean, or, or, or uh, you know, things that you're taking back from here in ways that you can possibly inspire few new directions for Bangalore City. Rajesh, anything that you want to say as a last, uh, maybe five seconds before we close, we are about 16 or 17 minutes behind the schedule, but that's okay. You know, I can still see that a whole lot of them are, are hanging around, are still there with us at this time. Rajesh, last word from you. Thank you. Monita Kafa, Akka Minson, Tamil elder sister. So thank you and uh, and happy to note most of them stayed back throughout this session. There's a lot of takeaway for many of us and hope it inspires many to do the good work in their region. Thank you once again. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you once again, Vanita Ji. Do you have any last thoughts or should we close now, Vanita Ji? Thank you very much. And I think it has been a very invigorating uh, session. Uh, what we look forward, what is going to be the major challenge in the times ahead is the pollution that is going to uh, uh, occur because of Economy. sewage. Right. Sewage, sewage and garbage are going to be two very, very important uh, impediments to, the, uh, to civilization, uh, civilization. And if uh, IGBC and uh, all the people who are here, distinguished people, if we can join together to come up with a solution for treatment of sewage, which is what we are going to be focusing on in the next coming years. It is going to be a huge uh, challenge because most of the water bodies on one side, we let uh, rainwater into the water bodies, but on the other side, you have sewage coming inside. So we'll be very happy if you can share your thoughts, if you can share your ideas, your technologies sure. with us to set up a few model uh, sewage treatment plants, which can benefit uh, mankind immensely. Absolutely. We'll come back to you. Uh, there are a lot of things that we're doing at CIA and IGBC and then with other initiatives, sometimes even beyond uh, India's borders in terms of technology. We'll certainly come back to you and see how we can engage with you. Thank uh, you. Uh, uh, Raghupati, you have switched on your video. Is there anything uh, you want to add? I think she has raised a very, very beautiful point. Vantaji has raised a very beautiful point of uh, wastewater can be used as a resource. I think the phyto remediation which uh, IGBC is promoting, that's an excellent concept. It can be done almost at uh, the very limited financial resources. It can and make the city more greener also. Absolutely. So I, I think the IGBC team can help uh, Manutaji and the Femto team for sure. a great effort of yeah. that. An you. Anand is here. I'm sure uh, I will discuss with him and see if we can do some homework on this and go back to Sirutuli on this. Some of you have asked that question. Sirutuli is not an acronym. Sirutuli is a word in Tamil. Please look up the website. Siru is small, Tuli is drop. So anyone who has anything to, who wants to know more about Sirutuli, please go up to the website, key in these words, and you'll get a whole lot of information that will be extremely useful and inspiring. Somebody from Pennsylvania who wrote in, Sarah, someone or the other, Guru Nathan, I think it was, 
please come back. We will see that we discuss with you and see how you can engage with Sirutili. I know you have also said that in your chat box that, uh, that you come from Coimbatore. If there is something you can do to add value to whatever uh, uh, you know uh, uh, Sirutuli is doing, like she said, it is not one person's effort. She's doing a whole lot of things together. And it is like, like that last slide of her said, together we can win. Thank you so much, Vanitaji, once again. And we shall close Thank now. Thanks so much Thank to all of you. Thanks, Rajesh. Wonderful story. Yeah.